So here I'm going to be going through the 2016 Leave Insert Higher Level Paper 1, Question 4. We have a nice little proof by induction question to begin with. So, step 1. Prove true for smallest allowable n. And that, in this case, is n is equal to 1 because it's not restricted. It's all n's. Minus 1, so we're just subbing it in. And that's 8 minus 1. And that is 7. And 7, we can factorize 1 out. So therefore, or factorize 7 out. So therefore, true for n is equal to 1. Step 2. Assume true for n is equal to k. So how do we actually do the assumption here? Well, if this is divisible by 7, it must be able to be written as 7 times some number. Think about any number that you think is divisible by 7. 42, 49, 35, any of them could be written as 7 times some number. And we call that some number A in this case. And the next part that I say in this step 2 is always isolate the complicated bit. So what's more complicated, 8 to the power of k or 7a? I think 8 to the power of k is the most complicated bit. So I isolate it, I get it on its own. So I add one to both sides. Step three, prove true for n is equal to k plus one. Let's go back, we've got eight to the power of k plus one, minus one, and I wanna show that this is divisible by seven, but I'm gonna use my assumption. So I use page 21 of the log tables, the first rule, page 21 of the log tables, the first rule of indices to break this apart, eight to the power of k, eight to the power of one, minus one. And this eight to the power of k was what I had up here. So I'm gonna write that as seven a plus one times eight minus one, seven times eight is 56. So I have 56 a plus eight minus one, 56 plus 56 a plus seven. And can I factorize out? Can I factorize out seven from this? Yes, I can. Seven, eight a plus one. As I can factorize out seven from this, it must be true. So I'm going to say, therefore, it must be divisible by seven. So therefore, true for n is equal to k plus one, assuming true for n is equal to k. We also know it's true for n is equal to one. Therefore, eight to the power of n minus one is divisible by seven. for all n's an element of n. Next question then, is it a logs question I think? Oh yeah, brilliant logs question actually, very stereotypical. So you really need to know your rules of logs. So on page 21 again, if you see a fraction in the logs, it's worthwhile breaking it apart. So we can write this like that. And that's rule number two of logs. I'd highly recommend numbering your log rules. So that's rule number two of logs. We notice here that this is Q. And now we're trying to change this to have a two here instead of an eight. So we might notice, and this will come with practice, that that is two, eight is two to the power of three. Minus Q, we'll change that. And then rule number three of logs is going to be used here. We can bring that power out to the front. So it's three log to the base a of two minus q. And now that's what was written up here. So I have three p minus q. And that's the question done. It's written in terms of p and q. Written in terms of p and q. The next one is very similar, write it in terms of P and Q. So again, the first rule that I'm gonna use is to break it apart. 
log to the base a of 9a squared minus log to the base a of 16. And I want them to be um, log to the base a of 3 was equal to q, log to the base a of 2 was equal to p. So I want to have a, a 2 or a 3 in here. This one is jumping out at me log to the base a of 2 to the power of 4. And then again, I can develop on that even further. Minus 4 log to the base a of 2. So that's using rule number 3 of logs. Rule number 3 of logs here. Number 3. And then finishing it, 4p. Okay. Because I have log to the base a of 2. Now let's focus on this bit then. This one's a little bit more difficult. Okay, and I probably will end up moving all of this maths over to the right a little bit, but I'm not worried about that right now. So there are two ways of approaching this. I would note that it's nine multiplied by a squared. And if you look at rule number one of logs, we can change that to addition. I'm going to move this over just because I haven't given myself enough space. And I'll bring it back in later on, okay? So this is log to the base a of 9 plus log to the base a of a squared. This 9 could be written as a 3 squared. And this squared could be brought out to the front. And now I do have enough space, I'm going to bring that back in. This squared here, that can also be brought out to the front. So it's 2 log to the base a of 3 plus 2 log to the base a of a minus 4p. And what can I note about this a log to the base a of 3? is q. And this one's interesting as well. Log to the base a of a is equal to 1. As a rule, it is equal to 1. Okay. If you think of changing this back to in this a form though, that is a to the power of 1 is equal to a. Okay. One, go and actually practice that top right hand corner of page 21, that rule in the top right hand corner, a to the x is equal to y log to the base a of y is equal to x. If you change it from a log to uh, index form, you'll see why that works out. So finishing it off then, let's say two more lines. This is q plus two times one minus four p. And maybe just a little reordering. Four q minus, sorry, not four q, two q, two q minus four p plus two. And that's it done. Looking at the market scheme quickly. 15 marks for the proof by induction question. Lovely, lovely question there. Um, five marks going for the first log question. And five marks going for the second one. Hopefully this has been useful for you.